Hi, my name is Matt Wendling and I'm a trainer for Drill Team Dynamics Incorporated. Today, we're going to talk about technique for double and triple aerials. Uh, but before we begin, uh, it's really important to note that this instructional video is designed for drillers uh, who are very comfortable with all of their basics, their regulation, uh, their basic manual techniques, as well as their basic spinning techniques. Uh, what we really want to make sure we do is before we progress on uh, to aerials, uh, we want to make sure that we have a very, very firm command of our single and our single back especially. We want to be able to do those uh, without really thinking about them. So we're going to begin in here because a lot of what uh, throwing an aerial requires uh, doesn't actually have to do with throwing the rifle into the air. Uh, a lot of the times uh, when you start to learn how to toss more than a single, uh, you go outside into the grass and you just start throwing the rifle up in the air and hoping it comes back around for two rotations. Uh, but what I'm going to show you is how you work the body uh, and how you think about uh, the way that you're throwing aerials to make it, one, a lot easier to teach, two, a lot more controlled. You're going to have the ability to manipulate where you want the rifle to go at all times. And three, that's going to lead to uh, the ability to throw aerials uh, really, really well in sync with the rest of your team members in a team context or if you're a soloist or a tandem driller, uh, to really be able to control uh, and manipulate how you want that aerial to look in a particular moment. So, let's start by talking about our single. When we throw a single, you'll notice that our release point for our single is somewhere right around our shoulder height, right? We bring the rifle down, we're at balance point just below the sling swivel. We bring the rifle down with a slight bend in our arms, so we can turn that energy around, we push over, and we let go somewhere in this area. So that is what gets us a single. Then we're going to talk about what makes a single turn into a double. Now, a lot of people think about throwing a double as throwing it up in the air, and as it's in the air, it rotates up for rotation, it comes back down. What I'm going to show you is essentially going to be raising the rifle up and allowing the rifle to drop off the hand and rotate on the way down to the catch, which really means that we're not throwing a double up. We're bringing it up to its release point and allowing it to rotate freely on the way down. So. To do that, we need to really kind of ditch the rifle. We understand that we started the port, we dip down, and we throw. So we're going to ditch the rifle for right now, and we're going to focus on the body and what the body's doing. So if you go to an imaginary position of vertical port, hand is up at top, right below the sling swivel, we're down at the small of the stock right here. What we're going to do is we're going to imagine that we're dipping down for our throw. Now, what most drillers do when they throw the rifle for a double or a triple is one of these numbers. They use the wrist and the elbow and they pull down and you wind up looking like this mid throw, right? But you do get the rotation and the speed out of it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change that up a little bit. What we're gonna do, and you can do this right along with me, we're gonna dip the rifle down. So now you're in an imaginary prep position for the throw. We're gonna raise up. First thing that's gonna happen is our upper hand, our right hand, is gonna pin straight down to the side of the pants. You notice that we come straight down, we kind of draw and around, that's gonna push the butt. By pinning all the way down, you're gonna ensure that you have enough momentum on the rifle. Now, we're gonna raise up with our left hand, and we're gonna squeeze a true fist. Notice my thumb is actually where it's supposed to be, it's not here, it's not here. We're squeezing a true fist at about forehead height, as you can see with a slight bend in our arm. So what this looks like when put together is this. This is where the release of the rifle is going to happen. Now, if we know that shoulder height with an open hand produces a single, then we can play a math game. To go from single to double, we're going to get half more, half more of a rotation by raising our hand from shoulder height to about forehead height. That's going to give us about half more rotation on the rifle. Now, the other half of the rotation is going to come from squeezing your fist as hard as you can on the release. So what that means is as you come up to throw the rifle, you're going to keep your thumb on it until that very point when it's up here, and you're going to squeeze. And when I say squeeze, you'll notice I'm tensing everything in my arm. I'm really locking up my bicep and tricep. I'm locking up my forearm. It's nice and tight. And I'm really, truly squeezing a hard fist. So we come down, we drop, we come up, and we squeeze. The rifle's going to come out of the hand up here. It's going to rotate twice, and on its way down, we're then going to be able to grasp and catch it. So we go from a single releasing open hand at shoulder height to a double by increasing the height and increasing the tension as we let go of the rifle. You should feel the rifle slip off the fingers if you're doing this properly. So 
if a double comes from adding height and adding a squeeze, then we can obviously, we can talk about a triple. A triple is a double wherein we then adjust the amount of squeeze and punch that we have, and we adjust the height at which we release. So if a double is squeeze and forehead height, coming from a single down here, then we know that a triple has to be higher and the punching motion has to be a little bit greater. So let's talk about the mechanics of this. We're at the position of port. We drop down. For a triple, we're still gonna pin this arm down as hard as we can. Pop, you wanna punch it, throw it down. That's gonna give it some rotational speed in the air. This arm right here is gonna come up, straight up, turn, and punch. You're gonna squeeze and punch as you come up. Now notice what my arm did not do. It did not come out and around. You wanna draw a straight line from point A down here to point B up in the air by coming straight up and snapping the elbow and turning at the last moment. Now you're turning your elbow, you're squeezing your fist and you've increased the height. That gives you your extra rotation that you need for it to become a triple. Now, it's important that we master this technique without the rifle first. One, because it's gonna force you to develop the right positioning from point A to B to C. When we do this in action, it's gonna become very important because no matter how much strength you have built up, this is gonna feel a little bit different, especially if you're already used to throwing aerials. So, how do we get the control element? What does this allow us to do? When we bring the rifle down and we bring it up, we now have a joystick with which we can control the rifle. Do we need to throw the rifle farther forward? We move the fist forward. Do we have a short person and a tall person next to us in uh, the block when we're throwing doubles? We can raise the shorter driller's hand a little bit higher, and we can lower the taller driller's hand a little bit down so that now the doubles are at equal height. That makes sense? When we come down for a triple, if the triple is drifting forward on us, we need to move our fist backwards. Ideally, we're letting go at the point at which the rifle needs to slot in front of us. If we find it's drifting to the side, we can adjust again using our arm as a joystick where our release point is for maximum effect. As it concerns uh, throwing non-standard aerials, for instance, to a knee as you drop uh, and catch, if you are going to step backwards and kneel backwards, you know that you may have to release slightly behind. Well, now you have a way to control that. It's not guess and check. It's, I'm gonna release a little bit closer to the body knowing that I'm about to move backwards away from that rifle. If I'm going to kneel straight down, I can slot where I need my triple to go based on where I put the joystick of my hand. So it's important that we master the control of the body. Again, you must work on squeezing a tight fist in each one of these motions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go outside and we're gonna put this into action so you can see how this body mechanic, squeezing and punching, pushing and punching, we're gonna see how that translates to the rifle itself. So let's first take a look at our double aerial. What you're gonna see is that I lower the rifle for the prep, I raise up, I squeeze, and I release somewhere around in this area. What's gonna happen is the rifle is gonna be carried to this area. From here, it's gonna rotate in the air as it falls down into my catching position. So, it looks like this. Now, for our triple aerial, you're going to once again notice that as I prep the rifle down, I come straight up, I follow point A to point B, I squeeze my release somewhere in here. Again, this allows me to control where the rifle is going to go. The rifle rotates in the air and is caught into the catch position. So it looks something like this. All right, now that we've seen how that works, let's talk about the, uh, the mechanics while the rifle is in midair and uh, the mechanics of the catch itself. Um, typically speaking, if we're throwing a double and we release the double, here, I'm gonna wanna leave this hand post. I don't really think there's enough time to bring the hand down before the catch. And two, most importantly, really, if you go up to here and immediately cut down, the tendency is going to be to go up just before the release point and 
pop the hand down before you actually have a good follow through. That'd be the equivalent of swinging a baseball bat and going right up to the ball and not following through. Uh, so for a double, we want to make sure that we leave the hand right here. Plus, this gives us a nice dress point so that everyone on the team can look the exact same in the middle of that area. Here, boom, catch. Now, for a triple, you have two options. Typically in a team sense, for me personally, I'm gonna leave the arm here because it's a nice dress point. It allows the drillers to make sure that they're actually coming through and following through with the correct motion. Uh, but you could also, because the rifle is in the air longer, pin the arm on the way down. In doing so, you need to make sure of two things. One, you need to make sure that you go to the release point and don't chop out before it. Make sure you go and follow through all the way to the squeeze with the snap of the elbow. And two, we wanna make sure that when we pin, we come straight down. In other words, we're not going and letting the hand come out and around. We wanna go as if the hand is an elevator and it's going up and it's coming down. It's never going out and around. So, if that's the mechanics of the rifle in mid-air, let's talk about the catch. To have a really good solid catch, and it shouldn't matter where the rifle goes as long as you don't need to step or bail from the toss, you should be able to lock a very solid catch. And it depends on the position in which you're catching, but the mechanic is still the same. To practice this, you can take the rifle, grasp it as if you're about to catch it, right? So I'm up on the balance point, down in the small stock. Hold it here, and pull. When you pull in, it doesn't matter where you pull from, what you're doing is you're squeezing and pulling backwards, you're squeezing and tensing your core, and you're bringing the rifle just slightly closer. This could even apply if you were planning to catch downward, you can catch here, and squeeze and pull into your catch. Here, squeeze and pull into your catch. Down here, squeeze and pull up. You want to practice this with a variety of different positions because the rifle very well could go off to the side or too far forward, and you need to be able to control that and really lock in your catch. By squeezing and pulling into that catch, you're ensuring that have, the rifle has a definitive stopping point. It should only take a split second to lock that rifle back in place. You can do this with a single. To practice that motion. Theoretically, you should be able to take the rifle from any reasonable point of catching it and return it to the proper position that you want it to be in when you're done. Even if it's all the way out or even if it's canted to the side, you should be able to return it to a nice solid catch by squeezing pulling your elbows in, squeezing your muscles, and tensing your core so that you're pulling everything to the center of your body. The same thing is true, tossing down. You want to take the rifle and force it to go where you want it to go. So no matter what, you have the ability to put the rifle in the position at which it's supposed to end. Lastly, let's talk about safety components. Uh, if the rifle goes up in the air and you realize something uh, doesn't feel right, doesn't look right, didn't feel right on the release, uh, what you need to do is be able to bail from that movement effectively. Now, keep in mind, a drill rifle might be $200. You as an individual uh, are irreplaceable. Therefore, if the rifle hits the deck, it kind of is what it is. Uh, your safety is the most important piece of the puzzle. So, if you see that the rifle is going up and you feel as though it is not going to come down and you're not going to have control on your catch and you need to remove yourself from the situation, a lot of people will just try to uh, jump away from the rifle. Kind of using common sense and using the surface that you're on, be it grass or be it concrete, uh, hopefully you're practicing over grass if this is brand new to you, uh, what we need to do is we need to back away and we need to move at an angle at which the rifle is not going to continue to tumble towards us or ricochet back towards us. As you know, if you throw the rifle up and the barrel is going to come down with the front sight blade hitting the deck, it's very likely to sprint off the deck and back out at you. Therefore, when we back away from the aerial, we're gonna want to make sure that we're moving back and at an angle to prevent ourselves from being the target of the ricocheting rifle as it leaves the drill deck. Best case scenario is you move back and with the angle and the rifle hits the deck and stays there, but just to be certain, we always wanna choose which angle is gonna be most strategic. Typically speaking, that's gonna to be to go away from that ricocheting motion of the rifle. Again, it's very important that you do not drill beyond your capability. You drill within your comfort zone and what you are physically capable of executing. Uh, obviously, drill requires you to continue to improve, uh, but we want that improvement to be incremental and within your ability to be comfortable uh, and controlled because safety is the most important element of any exhibition drill.